what up, guys? Bart here. George. With George. And we're in my house in Las Vegas. And George is a amateur boxer from Canada looking to turn pro. Yes, sir. And uh, he's super inspired me because I've watched a lot of his videos on Instagram. And he teaches like a lot of like, a lot of like um, really difficult techniques that is hard to digest, but through your videos, I was able to go, oh, okay, that's what I should be doing. Yeah, yeah, I try to keep everything as simple as possible so people yeah. can just like scroll through, oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, I can take that to the gym with me, done. Yeah, there's like just yeah. two or three things yeah, yeah, two, three I, I things. could yeah. take away. Um, but George is in Las Vegas for a fight, and I was like, I know he's a boxer, and I know he can kick my ass, no. but how strong are boxers? So today, I want to have George max out on the squat, bench, and deadlift to see where he's at. And these things will only be beneficial for when you turn pro. You'll know what your starting numbers are for your strength and conditioning. Absolutely. Have you squat, bench, and deadlift before? I do a little bit, but yeah. like not a lot. It's, it's mostly like explosive, like throwing motions that I do with my strength and conditioning. So this yeah. will be interesting. Like I'm not going to know what my maxes are. So you guys are going to push me a bit today. Are yeah. you excited to find out what they are? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm excited to find out how weak I actually am. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. All right, so if I were to have someone max out for the first time, um, I like to take everything into consideration. So, you know, like you've seen people like squat like this. Yeah, yeah. You've seen people squat very narrow. So I don't know what's the most comfortable for you just yet. So I'm gonna have you warm up like everything. Cool. So like we'll start in like a wider squat position and just go right until you feel like your hamstrings are, like you feel tension okay, and cool. then push your knees out. Should I have my feet out or? Oh yeah, kind of point out slightly at okay. 45 degrees and then push your knees out, go down, right when, stop right when you feel tight. Oh, you got really good mobility, okay, good. So I'm glad we're doing this, Yeah. because uh, usually when people can't hit parallel, you do want it to bring it in, because then you, you open it up, correct, but your correct. mobility is already good. So here, we'll just do like 10, 10 reps. Cool, so just like 10 yep. little ones? Yep, 10 like that. And then keep your eyes forward, because that's what's gonna help you with the balance, and your depth is really good. And on the 10th one, sit a little bit deeper and just hold it for a second. Okay, good. Ooh. Okay, good. Now bring it in, uh, like a, bring it in like six inches on each side. Cool. And do the same thing. 10 reps, good. And so as you're squatting, you wanna feel all of the weight on your midfoot, like literally right between your toes and your heel. That's where you want all the weight to be. Cool. Yeah. Good. And then the last one, you're gonna bring it in like just shoulder width. Yeah. And then try to go as deep as possible while still keeping your heels on the ground. Cause there'll be a tendency of- Right, like getting this. into like that Asian squat. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. But still, while still keeping the heels on the ground, I wanna see how deep you can go. Okay, cool. Okay, that's good. Oh, I can hear everything creaking. No, that's <laughs> normal. That's so normal. Everyone's watching me, I'm gonna fart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's good. So, I don't know if it's from the boxing training, but you have really good mobility, which is awesome. And I can see your balance is really good, of course, because you know, as a boxer. Yeah, so, yeah. there's a lot of things that I feel like, as I assess where your squat's at, I could throw half of them out the window which is awesome. So the first thing I'm gonna have you do is get under the bar and you wanna place the bar like on your upper trap right here. So in powerlifting, there's two main uh, t ways of squatting. There's like high bar, which is up here and then low bar, which is down here. Yeah. Since this is your first time, we'll have you squat high bar because it's more of a natural position. Yeah. Low yeah. bar is kind of something you kind of have to get used to. So you're gonna have the bar on your upper trap and then place your feet just slightly outside of shoulder width apart. And then I want you to take a big breath. And then uh, you're gonna brace your stomach as if someone's gonna punch you in the stomach. Cool. So it's not like you're bracing it where you're just flexing your abs and sucking it in, but you're, you're bracing it where you're almost pushing out this way and kind of pushing out towards your spine too. And you okay. go. And then you're gonna unrack. And when you unrack, I want you to just hold it steady and then I'll give you the next command from there. Okay. So you just want to keep it engaged. Exactly. Yeah. And then your ideal scenario is you want your abs to be able to stay engaged even while you're talking. And I'm sure that's how it is in boxing, right? Like 
you don't know when someone's gonna punch you in the stomach. So it's not like you could go, oh, he's punching me. Yeah, just take yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like almost halfway flex the whole time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I just. Yep, right there. Squeeze your shoulder blades together and then uh, activate your lats, pull your elbows in so that way you're kind of pulling the bar onto your neck too. Okay. Kind of like. Like you're this. bending the bar over your neck a little bit. Yep. Big breath. And then unrack. There you go. Cool. Now get into a stance where it's um, maybe six inches outside of your shoulders. Point your toes out just a little bit. So before you descend, what I want you to do is you're gonna break at the hips and the knees at the same time, meaning you're not gonna go like this and you're not gonna go like this. You're gonna go like that. Okay, so I just kinda wanna hinge my hips back. Exactly, and you're gonna hinge it back almost as if you're sitting on something but not all the way, obviously, because you're gonna fall down. You're gonna hinge back as if you're gonna sit on something and then you just descend straight down, keeping the, trying to align the bar over your midfoot. Okay. Yep, and then just go down. Good, 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 there you go. Come back up, that's awesome. Let's do two more reps at that speed. Good, come up. Come up, cool, you can rack it. How do I feel? Pretty good. Were you feel, did you feel off balance at all? No, like, I felt pretty stacked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it felt pretty good. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay, cool. We'll add, we'll add a little bit at a time because we've never maxed out before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, I'm gonna overestimate myself. Now I'm gonna be like, oh, I can do this and then I'm gonna fall on my ass. <laughs> yeah. So when you, I'm sure you train legs as a boxer, right? Yeah, oh yeah. What's oh, yeah. the main type of like legs that you guys do? I actually, so I do a lot of split squats. Oh. So, so like single leg stuff. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, like a variation of like the Bulgarian split squats. Like I that see. Lunges, like, I, like we isolate. Yeah. Instead of working both at the same time. Yeah. Like, cause, because I'm right-handed, mm. I put a lot more weight on my back foot. So I have to like build that balance. Even so it I kinda out. I kind of like try to work the left foot a little more. I yeah. see. Yeah. So you'll see like, you might start seeing like weird imbalances. Yeah, cause, yeah, yeah. Cause yeah, like we box like, like really heavy off the back leg. Yeah. Yeah, so. Okay. All right, we'll try this. Same thing, three reps. Okay. All the same cues. Um, one thing that I, one note that I can give you is as you're coming down, once you are about here, that's when I see your knees come in and kind of like, like you trust your knees a bit. Yeah. So what I want you to do is, instead of making it a movement where it's like this, and then you trust your knees, kind of like let it go evenly. As your hips sit back, your knees kind of go forward at the same time. Okay, so yeah. think more downwards. Yeah, and then have your knees and your hips like take the load evenly. Okay. Versus what I've seen is your hips will break and your knees will go forward, Yeah. but it gets about here and I think you go, oh, I don't have enough space and then your knees kind of go forward. Ah, uh, yeah. I see what you're saying. Okay, okay. Take care. Yep. Yep, sit back, there you go. Come up, nice. Make your feet a little bit wider. Okay. And then point your toes out, yep. Come up, awesome, and rack. How did that feel? Good, but that second <laughs> rep, I know I lost my balance yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit. I was like trying to find, I was like, ah, I'm trying to like do that thing you were telling me and yeah. I was like, I think I overthought it and I like leaned back a bit instead. Yeah, there's a lot to think about. Yeah, like what, cause once you try to fix something, it's so easy to overcompensate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely almost embarrassed myself. <laughs> so one thing that helps with stability is making sure you try to keep the weight on the midfoot, right? And also uh, when you're bending, when you try to pretend like you're bending the bar over your back, that kind of locks yourself into this, especially since you're tall, it locks yourself into this position where your body is one machine rather than almost like a cartoon where your legs are going here and your body comes over here and you're going yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, so if you pull it down, then it's almost as if like your whole body is like one unit. Okay. So we'll move up weight a little bit. We'll see. So far the weight's moving really good though. Okay, good. I was, yeah. like, I was like, I swear like we'll make it like, <laughs> he's like five kgs. <laughs> This Who's guy's your... a boxer, he's weak. <laughs> well, in boxing, 
it's about how hard you hit, right? Not, yeah, yeah. Not, <laughs> not how much weights you could lift. Absolutely, and how fast you can be, so. But I think like the exercise science is advancing. Yeah. More and more like professional boxers and like fighters are incorporating like way smarter uh, like ways to train. Weight training, yeah, 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 yeah. Way smarter, way smarter. It's not like that old school mentality, oh, you just gotta run, focus on your boxing and stuff like that. It's, there's so much more to it now. Yeah, I even follow uh, some surfers. Yeah. And they're like, they're holding like a kettlebell on like, you know, the basu ball? Yeah. And then they're like doing lunges, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then they're like doing lunges. So even like surfers, it doesn't matter what you're doing, like people are adding weight training and like crazy yeah, now. Yeah, and everything, yeah. All right, cool, so same thing. I'll get behind you because I saw what happened earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So we gotta be safe. Yep, big air. There you go. And then make your feet slightly a little bit wider because you're pretty tall. Okay, whenever you're ready, break out the hips, go down. Yep, come up. Nice, really good. One more. Come up. Perfect. Can you rack it? Also, I feel like as it's getting heavier, the form's getting better too. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, good. good. Maybe you're too explosive, so it's too light, and you're like, you know, whoa, <laughs> Possibly. <going> on? <laughs> nah. That's cool. No, that, <laughs> that felt pretty good. Like, the, those two reps, like, they felt, like, nice. Yeah, yeah. it felt, like, locked in like a yeah. machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It felt even, yeah, better than the previous one. I kind of, like... To do you have a favorite boxer? Yeah, the, the one we watched last oh, night. Canelo. Oh, Canelo. that's what you have He's to come He's my out. inspiration. He's my inspiration. We were making a joke like, I changed my name to Jorge instead of George. <laughs> that's tight. <laughs> Y'all heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm gonna get back there. But okay. same thing. Same thing. This one, uh, just do one. And then instead of pausing at the bottom, as soon as you feel like you're past parallel, uh, just come up. Okay. Yep. Okay. So I just want to get down and up. Yeah. Okay. But also don't, don't try to be like a, you know like a locker room towel where you're hitting each other. Like don't right. try to use the speed to like recoil. Yeah, yeah. In a controlled motion, when you go down, as soon as you hit it, then you come up. Okay. Cool. Yeah. But don't try to bounce out of it. Okay. Big air. Yep. Good. Whenever you're ready. Come up. Nice. Thank you. Cool, with the racket. It's looking pretty good. Is it? <laughs> no, it's looking pretty you good. You say that. No, I'm serious. It's looking okay. really good. Yeah, that's pretty good too. That's yeah, you're really getting good. pretty close to a geo squat, so that's pretty good. How much does Linda squat though? Oh, Linda's strong too. Yeah, Linda's that's what I was too. saying. I was like, yeah. I'm about to find out that I'm weaker than Linda. I'm weaker than all the girls. Nah, on. No, nah, Linda's strong too. <laughs> Linda pulls what? 225? No, 200. I thought I saw a deadlift 225. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that the other day. I, that's why I, I responded. I was like, yeah, I don't think I can do that. That's like, strong, huh? I, was like, I don't know what you guys think I'm going to be dwelling when I saw <laughs> that. <laughs> no, that's strong. Yeah, that's good. All right, so this one is the first big milestone okay. in most people's lifting journey. Regardless if you're a power lifter, regardless if you're a bro or a bodybuilder, this is 135, which is what they call a plate. Okay. Um, I think you can do it easily <laughs> and we'll see. All yeah. right, <laughs> let's see, let's see. We'll see if your fiance stays your fiance after Yeah, this. yeah, she might, she might walk <laughs> out of here pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, but this, uh, make sure you keep all the air here. Okay. Brace nice and tight. The heavier it gets, the harder you want to brace. Okay. Just and you're only gonna ball. just do one. And you're only gonna just do one rep, okay? Okay, one rep. Yep. Cool. Whenever you're ready, big air. Yep. There you go. Slightly six inches outside of your shoulder, a little bit wider. There you go. Come up. Easy. That was really easy. Did it look easy? Because that's. <laughs> Did it feel heavy? <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's pretty good. Pretty, it's good? pretty good? Yeah, okay. I think we can probably move up a bit. Yeah. All right, all right. Here we go. No, that, that felt really good. So what was that? 135. 135. 
So now that you're nice and warmed up, uh, I'm gonna take slightly bigger jumps. Cool, cool. But that are still within um, what I think your means are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you'll know better than me. So. Especially since you said, I overheard you say playing basketball. Yeah. So I know you have decently strong legs because most basketball players, you know, they're jumping all the time. And Correct. Uh, the basketball players that I have coached that have never even squatted a day in their life, usually when they come into the squat rack, they're actually pretty good. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Cause, I cause run a lot, a lot of, of stairs yeah, too. A lot of drills are like this, right? Yeah, Yeah. True. So. Yeah. And I think the split squats help. Like I do a oh, lot yeah. of like, yeah, yeah, single leg like lunges, so they must be carrying a bit. Right yeah, now. split squats yeah. is something that's huge for a lot of powerlifters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Cause you know, when you're training and you're just squatting just like this all the time, you don't know if one leg is compensating for the other. Right, right. And so it's hard to find that issue until it's like the day of the meet and then that might be too late. So a lot of powerlifters will do a lot of lunges, split squats and make sure that you're training up the lacking body parts too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, muscular imbalance is tough. Yeah, it is. All right, so this is, I'm not gonna even tell you what it is, I'll tell you after. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to psych myself out. Okay, so big air. And I got you in only one rep. There you go. Whenever you're ready. Up. Up, 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 up. Oh. Uh. You could do one more. I think you got this. One more. Ooh. We'll give it a little break, okay, but okay. I think you got this. I, yeah, I think so. I kind of collapsed. And I think you kind of uh, psyched yourself out a little bit. Yeah. But I think now that you know how heavy it is, because the jumps have been roughly like 20, 30 pounds. Right. But right. I think this one was the first big jump where it's like 50. Okay. So I think this one, you're probably like, oh shit. Or your, bod your body has a natural reaction of going, oh shit. But now that you know what it feels like, I think you got it. Okay. Yeah, I think when I was unracking it, I was like, what the hell? Like, I can't lift this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then that's when I was like, I was like, okay, 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 I don't know if I can do this. Stuff. Yeah, like your nervous system uh, actually has its own like built-in kind of incremental gauge. So when you jump big, it'll go, it'll have like a oh shit moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, but now that you've done it, I think you'll get the next one. Okay. So we'll rest like two minutes. Okay, sounds good. I'll just lock in for this one. Yeah. yeah. And this one, get the biggest air you've ever gotten. Okay. Like, and then hold it tight as if like, Canelo's gonna punch you in the stomach. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> so for this one, when you get under the bar, I almost like to breathe myself into the bar. Okay. So when I have the bar on my back, especially when I'm going really heavy and I know I need to brace every single thing. And um, the way you kind of want to think about it is, you know a basketball, if it's slightly deflated, it's not a very strong basketball, right? When the yeah. basketball is really tight, like all the air is expanded, it's a hard basketball. And if you throw it off something, it'll bounce off and it's pretty hard, you know, like a break glass. Yeah. So the same thing with your body, the less gaps and cavities you have, uh, the stronger you're gonna be. So when you breathe into the bar, like really try to like expand your entire diaphragm and your abdominal muscle, breathe into the bar, bring the bar close and make everything one unit. Okay. And then, so un and then unwrap. Essentially be hard. Like yes. David Goggins says. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, you can move your feet forward a little bit more. Yep. Big air, breathe deep into here and into here. Unwrap. Yep. Whenever you're ready, take a big air and then go down. Up, 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 up. There we go. Hell yeah. Whew. That's pretty good, dude. I think I found it, the PR. <laughs> <laughs> that was 185. Okay, 185, I'll take That's that. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> oh man, that was tough. How much you uh, I'm 160. Yeah. Dude, that's really good. And what do you fight at? I fight at 147. That's 147? what my class will be, yeah. Dude, this is good. And then we're 185 without really training it. Yeah. Um, if you train it and you get like past 200, which I think you probably even get to like the 300s probably within a year, I think you'll be very surprised at how the much, yeah, how much more explosive you are. 
and how much harder you can punch, especially since technique is probably not the issue with you. It's probably the absolute strength part of it. You yeah, know? okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to like do more of this because I, I am thinking of like a different approach now to my training. Yeah. And really, really like add this to my arsenal. Hell yeah. All right, we're gonna bench now. You ready? Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is bench. Um, before we jump on there, I like to have the athlete uh, warm up in something that they're used to. So I'm sure you're used to doing push-ups, right? Push-ups, yeah, yeah. Can I see what your push-up looks like? Absolutely. Uh, so I do like a lot of different, like... So you like to show off on no, 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 no. This is just like my, the most comfortable one because our wrists. Oh, you gotta build up the strength in the wrists? Yeah. Okay. So this is good, because this tells me you generally have like a medium to wide grip. Yeah. Um, so go ahead and lay on the bench now. And can you put your middle finger on this line? Middle finger on this line. Have you benched before? Uh, a long time ago, like in high school. <laughs> okay, so as with all lifting, <clears throat> as with all lifting, you're the strongest when you can, as you say, like stack yourself, right? So you wanna stack your wrist to the barbell, okay. and you wanna stack your elbow to the wrist, and then that way everything is supported. Kinda of even like the way you throw a punch, right? Like when you're throwing a hook, it's kinda of weak if it's right here, but if you have high elbows, yeah, then yeah. you get all that power torqued right, into right. it. So by stacking all your joints together, you're gonna to get the maximum force. Okay. So some people will bench with elbows in like this, but you still need to have your uh, joints stacked. Some people bench out and that's okay too. But the key thing is to make sure that your elbow is behind the wrist and your wrist is behind the bar. Okay. Okay, you ready? So okay. Well, I wanna see you do um, five reps and you'll take two seconds to come down and then one second to come up. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, go. Good. Good. Nice. Two more? Oh, right. Two yep, more. two more. Good. And then last one. Awesome. How did that feel? Pretty good. Pretty good? Yeah. Okay. We're going to move up a little bit. Two foot? Yep. <laughs> yeah, right away. <laughs> yeah, I can. I'm pretty sure like the imbalances will show on bench. Really? Yeah, because like with punching, like we throw so many more jabs than we throw the right. So even so, if you're right-handed, do you think your left hand is stronger? Maybe not in like, like maybe not like stronger, stronger. I don't know. It's like, I just throw like, like on average, I'd say like five times more with my left than I would with my right. And you're right-handed? And my right hand. Yeah. <laughs> so it, should be, it should be interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, you ready? So same thing. Uh, you're just gonna do two reps. Okay. And I want you to go two seconds down. Because uh, since it's, you haven't been doing this as much, I want you to really understand where the motion is happening. Okay. So two seconds down and one second up. Two seconds down yep. and one second up. Ready? Yeah. Good. There you go. Nice. Perfect. Dude, those look like you've been powerlifting for a long time. <laughs> no, I was very controlled. The bar path was a straight line, okay. and as soon as it touched your chest, you exploded, so just keep doing that. That's really good. It's the stories. I watch all your stories. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like shadow benching before. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so what you just did, keep doing that. Um, I don't even know if you're conscious of it, but your body is doing it, and you're keeping your shoulder blades pinned behind you, and that's gonna form a good foundation. So just keep doing everything that you've been doing. Okay. I don't know what I've been doing, but. Perfect, your body's, your body's <laughs> okay. smart. Okay. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Just do one rep. Press up. <laughs> Easy. I think your bench might be stronger than your squat in relation. Not in absolute weight. In like weight, but yeah. yeah. Uh, but. That, I, I think probably, probably. Might have skipped some leg days here and there. <laughs> <laughs> Too much running. <laughs> that was really fast. That was oh shit. Fast leg, that's good. Yeah. I mean, it seemed light for you. 
<laughs> oh yeah, no, it didn't feel heavy yet. Yeah, yeah, it definitely didn't feel heavy yet. Literally, your body compared to how you're squatting, like this is a lot more natural for you. Yeah, yeah, it definitely feels natural. Yeah. And it could be from just all the push-ups that you do. Like yeah, it's a yeah, very similar yeah. motion. Similar. So many push-ups. So many push-ups. Yeah. Alright. Alright, you ready? Yeah. So same thing you've been doing. <sighs> easy. Oh man. That's easy. I don't know about easy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> just, just say, just say some big numbers. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Same thing. Same thing. <sighs> oh my goodness! It keeps getting faster. <laughs> That's crazy. You should be a powerlifter, dude. Maybe I should. Yeah, Maybe be a professional I'm powerlifter. Doing the, I'm, doing, I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> What's that thing I see like people do when they like like look like their back's about to break? You know, like when they like like really like. Oh, and they're arching. Yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> the arch in powerlifting is in powerlifting. Your number one goal is the max weight lifted. Yeah. So there's a couple of factors that are really important. One being stability. So the better and stronger your arch is, um, that's where all the weight is gonna be. So oh, that's okay. where you have the most foundation, right? Versus like someone that's benching. And you'll, you'll see that at a commercial gym where their legs are like wiggling all over the place and it looks oh, like they're okay. about to like twist her back or something. So that's number one. Number two, the e efficiency part of it is if you can shorten the, the range of motion. So for example, me benching like this, I might have like, like two feet. Yeah. But yeah. if I can go like this, and then now it might be like a foot and a half, mm. then I have to go um, less. And also, my arms are gonna be stronger blasting from here versus blasting from back here. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. That so that's sense. the reason. That makes sense. All right, so same thing. Uh, one thing that did pop out a little bit that I saw once it got a little bit heavier is just be mindful of how much your elbow pops out on the way up. When it was lighter, the bar path of your elbow or the path of your elbow going down and up was exactly the same. As it got heavier, it kind of flared out a little oh, bit. Okay. So just be mindful of that. So I want to stack it. Yeah, yeah. However you come down, you want to repeat that motion back up. Same. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Just like the jab. Yep. One, two, three. Up, up, up. Nice. So what you want to do is uh, the bar has been coming down here. Yeah. This one came up here. Yeah. But you're so strong that you still overpowered it. But you want to keep it here. Keep it here. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think again, like I was trying to overcorrect like, yeah. with the elbows. Yeah. Must have done something funny. <laughs> Man, y'all, y'all, y'all got so much lifting knowledge over here. <laughs> you guess, do you know uh, guess how much bar crunches? No, like. What do you think is max number would be? How much is this? That's how much is that? One sixty five. So, uh, that's 175. So put twice that. <laughs> yeah, more. Even more, right? My max best, yeah. Holy cow. I can't even come, because that started to get pretty hard. I was like, like twice that. More than twice. More than twice. That's insane. A little bit more. Like 390. I couldn't even deadlift that. <laughs> probably not. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no, not probably, like, absolutely not. Like, like, I, don't, I don't even know if I can do 275. So. Right, so making sure, make sure the bar goes down here. And like sternum area. Sternum area, yes. But everything else, keep it the same. Okay. One, two, three. <sighs> no, nope, that one wasn't going anywhere. Yeah, no, it was not. <laughs> How did that feel? Did that feel like it I was think, just... No, I think I might, like, I kind of... I exhaled on the way down and I oh, lost, my, uh, I lost all your my, air. And, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. all your rigidity. Yeah. I'm gonna drop the weight a little bit. Okay. And I think you should be able to do this for sure. Yeah. So a, another cue that could help you, so that when the bar comes down, not all of the air comes out. As the bar is coming down, I almost try to breathe and meet my chest to the bar. Like deep breath in. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, but I'm already starting with a lot of air, like big air. But as it comes down, I'm almost uh, meeting my chest to the bar as well. Cool. Because you want to stay like nice and rigid. Yeah. So when it comes down, I'll be like this. And then come back up. Oh. But also, before I even unrack it, I'm taking like a big bit, like my normal bench, uh, my normal bench ritual would be big air, unrack, and once I stabilize, then I let the bar come down. And as it's coming down, you're, you started to, when it got heavier, you want, you kind of had like this rebounding effect, which you don't want. Because many times that rebound effect will push your air out. And you'll lose that tension. Yeah, and you won't mimic the same bar path on the way down. Because on the way down, your body will find the most efficient way to move. Yeah. But on the way up, if you don't, if you're not mindful of it, it's gonna go wherever the bar like wants yeah. to go. Yeah. So once again, it'll look like this. I made that look so easy. I made that look way too easy. <laughs> okay. You got this. Big air. Bring it down to your sternum. Blast it up. <laughs> up, 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 up. There you go. Hell yeah. Whew. I would say that's probably roughly where your max is. Roughly, yeah. yeah. I think so. That was tough. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's 165. So you bench more than your walking weight, which is really good. Okay, that's good. That's good. Good to know, at least I can push myself. Yeah. Yeah, and now we'll move on to the deadlift. Okay, awesome. Next up is gonna be deadlift. And can I take you, can I see you do like a long jump? A long jump? Yeah, yeah. Just set up for it. You don't even have to do a long jump, okay. just set up for it. Okay, cool. So that's generally uh, where you're gonna have your deadlift start at. Cause um, a deadlift, the motion of it is very similar to a horizontal long jump. Yeah. And so if that is where your feet feels stable, that's where we're gonna have you set up. But after this video, if you're gonna incorporate deadlift into your training way more, um, I'm a big believer as well as there's many people that are strength and conditioning coaches that are also powerlifters and trained fighters that the sumo deadlift Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is actually way more applicable to fighters. Oh, okay. Because of the amount of lateral movement that needs to happen. So with the sumo, you're training uh, to be able to exert energy this way. So this is actually, it strengthens your hip socket, your glutes. Yeah. As opposed to, you're almost never fighting like. Correct. Yeah, <laughs> like it's, that. Like, it's like very, yeah. Yeah, so Lateral. conventional yeah. is very good if you're going this way. Uh, so sprinters, you know, going in a straight line. Yeah. I think this is very good. But in terms of like a fighter, training the sumo is going to be way more applicable. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. But for the sake of powerlifting, and since it's your first time, the conventional is easier to learn versus a sumo deadlift. Okay. Cool. 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 So we'll get you lined up over here, and it looks like you're roughly your shins are where this line is. So okay. if you line it up that way. And then have have the barbell be right. Yep, that's perfect. Right above like the middle of your foot. Yeah. And um, wherever your hands hang, go ahead and reach down and grab the bar. Okay. Do I want like an alternating grip or like? A... Uh, you do, but for the first one, you don't need it. Okay. <coughs> um, have your hands be slightly outside of your legs. Yep. Make sure it's even. Yeah. Take a big breath, and then just lift it up. Stand up. Good. Do it. Uh, two more. It's a very natural movement for you. Cool, that's it. What parts of your body you feel like are firing the most? Your ass cheeks? A little bit, and then kind of like the inner, the inner thighs a little bit, like the hips. Oh, really? Yeah, I think, okay. I don't know why. <laughs> it's a very natural movement for you though. Okay. So we'll bump up the weight. Okay, cool. Do you do deadlifts of any sort, like trap bar or with dumbbells or anything like that? I have uh, been doing a little bit with a trap bar. Yeah. And also, no, I guess not, but just the just the trap bar. Yeah. Trap bar. Yeah, because like we'll do we'll do them for reps. 
and then I'll do shrugs right after. Oh, cool. Just kind of in like a circuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For athletes, um, trap bar is generally better because with the deadlift, the barbell forces the weight to be in front of you. Yeah. Which causes more strain on your lower back when you could be training your lower back with as not as much strain. So most athletes like training with uh, the trap bar better. Yeah, it just feels like when I use the trap bar, it's like right below me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, the sumo, I think is something that'll be really good to incorporate. Yeah, I think I will, I'll try that. All right. So your deadlift looks really good. Um, I don't have any extra cues for you, but just the same as before, which same is, before. yeah, Mid your foot. shins, line up on the line, your foot, have your hands be ropes, go down and then take a big breath and then stand up. Awesome, that's it. That's really good. Yeah, that one felt real smooth. That smooth, yeah. really smooth. One yeah. note that I did see, um, I don't know if you're conscious of it, but when it's coming up, just make sure to keep the barbell as close to you as possible. Close to me. Yeah. Because uh, I did see it drift away like half an inch, but the minute it drifts over, like any, any With time. With heavy weight, I'll get. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be hard to muscle it back. So like with the deadlift, what main muscle groups are we like really hitting? So with the conventional deadlift, you're hitting your lower back, um, your lats, your glutes, your hamstrings mainly. Oh, okay, yeah. good. Uh, your quads so are still in. a lot in. of posterior, right? Yeah, yeah your yeah, posterior yeah. chain. Your, um, your quads are still in it. Your rhomboids, like your upper back, are still in it, but not as much as your glutes, lower back, and hamstrings. Okay, cool. I think, yeah, yeah I'm gonna be doing a lot more deads. Yeah. Yeah. I would say conventional deadlift, in terms of sport specificity for a boxer, um, will probably help out more in the, like the rolling aspect, or like like an inside game if you're strong. I don't know if you, is there any type of like shoulder checking in at oh, all? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you'd be in here, you create distance. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. Uh, maybe even in like, if you guys are clinched up, yeah, that yeah. would help out a lot. You'll, like whoever your opponent is, if they deadlift a lot, yeah, for sure, they'll, they'll feel strong. Yeah, yeah you're like, yeah. oh, this guy has a very strong foundation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to be like the rock. The rock? The rock. Rock don't move, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, same thing. Same thing. Yep. Big air. And stand up. Nice. Super easy. I think you're gonna deadlift more than Linda today. I, I, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. One of the guys that I really look up to in terms of strength and conditioning for combat sports. Yeah. His name's Phil DeRue. And what he has a lot of his athletes do uh, during weight training, because the, the pro of weight training is you build absolute strength, yeah. which is very good. And you're able to have more muscle awareness and there's lots of tension, there's lots of power. The problem is, you know, when you see like bodybuilders or powerlifters get into combat sports, they're just tight all the time. Yeah. They're yeah. not loose. Right. And because they're because our sport literally from the unracking the bar, we're like squeezing as hard <laughs> as we can the whole time. So what he'll have his athletes do is in between deadlift sessions, build shadow box. Shadow box. Ah. So as you're building power, you're utilizing this to build strength, but not to build bad habits. Right, right. Yeah. So he'll just have people just shadow box for like stay loose, stay loose, stay loose, stay loose, yeah, stay, yeah, loose yeah. stay loose. But then when you need the power, go back, boom, or time. squat or bench. Yeah. That's yeah, that makes sense. So this one, I want you to try a mixed grip. So okay. what, like over under? Over under. Yeah. Okay. But same grip width. Okay. Yeah. Same grip width. And then same everything else. Big air before you stand up. Okay. Big air, big air. How's that? Super easy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Super easy. Yeah, 
I was trying to channel like my cousin does a lot of deadlifting and he yeah. does this thing. He goes like, <laughs> like oh, I mean, yeah. you got this ritual. I'm oh, just like, there's, oh, I got to do something like that. In the powerlifting space, man, there's like, there's like freaking like Dragon Ball, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Summon the powers of the world. There's, it's there, crazy. He, my cousin's like your biggest fan, dude. Oh, he, he? What he found out, I was like, yo, so Eric, if you're watching this, <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, we going two plates. Yeah, we're going two plates. As funny as all the rituals are, they do serve a purpose. Yeah. And for most people, it's to find the lat activation. Right. Because the lat, which is the muscle, that's kind of where your armpit is. Yeah, yeah. That's what's going to keep the barbell close to you. Okay. So for most people, when they're doing like whatever crazy thing that they're doing, they're trying to make sure to keep their shoulder in a place that's stable. So you don't want to be like all like uptight and scrunched up either. So they're usually trying to find a place wherever, whatever they're doing to get their shoulders relaxed, but also lats um, flexed. Cool. Yeah. And activated. Yeah. The lats are so like, like every boxer, like it's the, it's the boxing muscle they say. Yeah. 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 All right, two plates, big air and stand up. Nice. That's really good. So one thing that popped out to me is um, your hips did rise first. Okay. All the other reps, it was perfect. Like your hip joint and your shoulder joint went up exactly at the same time. This one, it was slightly up like this, and then... Okay. Yeah, but it's just getting heavy. Yeah. So one cue I would give you is, at the same time as you're standing up, think about pulling the bar and also pushing your feet into the ground. Into the ground, okay. Yeah. Like one smooth motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So now you might be focusing too much on standing up. Yeah. And you know, when you're in, in regular life, like if you're gonna pick something up, no one goes, like that, you're right? Correct. You're, yeah. People end up going like this. So they do hinge at the hip first. Yeah, yeah. So that's probably what's happening. So now the, another cue to help that out is when you're standing up, think about pushing your legs through the ground at the same time. Right. I actually heard that before. One of my friends told me that. He's like, think of it like you're pushing the earth away from you. Yes. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Oh, Without yeah. flexing your arms, keeping it straight. Yeah, keeping it. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to put on some Linda weight. Oh, shit. And then we'll see if you're stronger than a girl or not. Oh, man. It's the moment. <laughs> yeah, when I saw you pull this, I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. This is the, gonna be the moment. This is gonna be the title of the video. Are boxers stronger than girls? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can the boxer lift as much as a, as a girl? Which is funny, because uh, one of my friends, she was a professional powerlifter turned boxer. Yeah. And she's stronger than me too. Yeah, no, yeah. girls like, like so strong. Cause they got good form, they focus on it. Yeah, yeah. they're strong, strong. All right. So yeah, big air, keep your arms straight. And as soon as you break the weights from the ground, push, push the ground away. away from you. Okay. And you can explode as hard as you want. Okay. Yep. Gotta be stronger than Linda. Nice. That was really good. I still definitely felt like the, the hips did the thing again. Yeah. 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 I, I felt it. Stuff I like that um, can also just get corrected over time. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is, you probably, I mean, this is 275. I don't know if you're ever working in this range. Never. Yeah. Never. For the most part, even powerlifters don't work in their 90% range. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Most, I would say powerlifters work in their like 50 to 80%. And I'll say most athletes, they don't not focus on uh, strength. It's probably between 40 to 60. Yeah. Um, so the benefit of going that heavy though is the weaknesses show up so you know what to do to correct later. True, true. Yeah, I just felt it as soon as, as soon as it got heavy. Yeah. Other things in my body wanted to help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was yeah. like, I don't know, like, just get it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now we're going past Linda weight. Yep, past Linda weight. Just for the record, yep. <laughs> past Linda weight. <laughs> Just to see where you're truly at. 
I don't know. What is that? So now this is 295. So just under 300. Just under 300. Yeah. OK, well, so now you can tell me how much, how much you, you deadlift. Uh, my best ever um, was 600 at a meet, but I got all three red lights because uh, there's this thing at a competition you can't hitch, oh. which you can't like go like this and then, and, oh. then, and then stand back up. OK. So that was the best ever, I guess, pulled off the floor. Yeah. Um, yeah, so 600. Six. What do y'all eat over here? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep, big air. Chest up. Yep. Up, 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 up. Nice. <laughs> That's really good. How'd that feel? Yeah, I feel like the earth just shook a little bit. <laughs> yeah, because there's a lot of weight. Yeah, it must have been something. Yeah, That yeah, was yeah. awesome. Pretty good. So if I were to uh, test your max as like an athlete that I would continue to program for immediately, I would have you stop there. Yeah. Uh, but it's not your absolute max. Do you want to okay. find out what your absolute max is? Yeah, I actually do. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I must find out now. Let's do it. I felt like that was tough, but... I might, have, I might have like an extra like 5% more I can give, maybe more than that. Even. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. Yeah. What, what we'll do is we'll rest a little bit longer too. Okay. So you have cool. a little bit more. I'll get some electrolytes in here. Yeah. <laughs> do you wanna try a belt? What's it do? It helps with like, um, it first keeps your back protected, yeah. but also helps with like stability. You know how I was telling you earlier, like you wanna be an inflated basketball, right? Yeah. So imagine that you have an inflated basketball and now you wrap that basketball with duct tape. It's even okay, stronger. Okay, yeah, maybe I should. Yeah. Just because I'm, I'm about to try something I've never done before. And I don't know if this might be too, I might be too fat for you, but try putting it on the, on the most inside. Let's see if okay. it works. Damn, y'all lifters got some crazy. We got some crazy, crazy shit. Crazy shit. Yeah. This way. Oh, okay, now this is not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah, tried geos, baby. That's definitely not gonna work. Yeah, I got a small, small way. This I'm, might be like, too small. Really, I'm really thin. Really? This might, this might not work either, but we'll see. Can you, uh, when you inhale and then press out against it? Does it feel tight around you? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. So we're not gonna close it because I think Jill's waist is too small. But well, yeah, we'll rest one more minute. Okay. My waist is almost as small as Jill's. Almost. <laughs> I'm, I'm, well, that's that's a good thing though. Is it? It, sh it, sh it shouldn't be like this. Yeah. No, it's strong. No, you want you want to look like that, right? I guess, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I just, I, as long as it works. As yeah, 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 that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I guess I want to be a smaller target, so. Yeah? Yeah. That's true. All right, you ready? Everything you've been doing, the same. Okay. How much is this? This is 305. <laughs> okay. Uh, take an inch forward. So the heavier the weight gets, every single inch and matters. angle matters. Okay. Yep. Keep the bar close to your body as it comes up. I'm gonna you got show. This. You got this. Big air and just rip it. Chest up. Up, 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 up. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I think you got 315. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think you got 315. I think so. I think so. 315 is a huge benchmark. Three plates. Man, that's crazy. I've never even like attempted to put like that much near this on. much weight on there. Like, no, ever. this is awesome. This is freaking awesome. Even with a trap bar, like the trap bar is light, so like yeah. it, it's not like the the deadlift, like the bar, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and the grip is higher too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah exactly. I've never even. That's that was crazy. I think it's the belt. The belt. Maybe. <laughs> no, it's you though. So. 
I think you can do it. Linda doesn't think you can. So you probably have to prove her wrong. Okay. Time to, time to prove Linda wrong. Yep. So keep the bar, yep, right there, close to your shins. Big air, the biggest air you've ever inhaled. And then explode off the ground. Up, 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 chest up, chest up. There you Ugh. go. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. All right. 15. All right. Damn. That was tough. That was really that was good. Tough. So we hit uh, 185. My math's not that good. Where's my My thing? face was probably like. <laughs> 185 on the squat. 185 on the squat. Do you have a calculator? Let's see what his total is. So in powerlifting, you take your best squat, your best bench, your best deadlift, and that's your powerlifting total. Yeah. So today you've earned your very first total, and we'll see what it is. So it's 185 on the squat, 165 on the bench, 315 on the deadlift. 665. 665 is your official first powerlifting total. Damn, so you could like one pull one thing and then you'd be almost past my, my max of everything. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't thinking about it like that, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, the crazy I, thing is- I'm competitive. Yeah. I'm always like, oh man, like that's how far I am away from the best. <laughs> no, there's, I mean, there's guys that are like, it's just so strong that, um, like my, my bench might be stronger than other people's deadlifts. And there's other guys where my deadlift isn't even as strong as their bench either. Yeah, yeah, there's some like, like They're it's just crazy. Freaks. The world is so big. Yeah, so there's just... What's the best that you like that? Like, would you compete at, like, for boxing? I would fight at 147. Like, 148 or 145? Yeah, so, like, as a 148 guy, a pretty competitive 148 guy in this day and age would probably have, like, a 1,200 to, like, 1,350 total. Uh, that would probably put them in, like, maybe top 100 in the country. Wow. So that would roughly translate to, like, high threes, maybe low fours on the bench, uh, on the squat. Um, high twos to low threes on the bench, and then probably like around fours. Okay. But you're really close on the deadlift. And like I was saying, most athletes generally have a Higher pretty deadlift. good deadlift just starting off because from all the hip hinging that yeah, they do. Yeah. And it really showed today. So the other two, with technique, you can, you know, increase the strength very quickly. Yeah, yeah. And then just through more training, you could probably break past 800, I would say, maybe in like two or three months. Shit. Yeah. And that's it's, 140 pounds. It's so pound cool to know like how you guys like actually uh, measure like the strength. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, because I didn't know like before. I was like, I don't know when you guys compete. I don't know how they like do it. You know, like how you would like. You might have to go home with this belt on you. I think it's. Yeah. <laughs> I like. I think that three. Uh, what was that? How 315. Much, that 315 like busted something up. <laughs> yeah. You grew an extra muscle. Yeah. <laughs> We got difficulties. There, there we go. go. Whew. Yeah, I must have grew an extra like an extra lap. Yeah, he <laughs> did. He did. So that was super cool. Um, I love boxing, and it was cool to see George, who's a boxer, come into my sport a little bit, and kind of uh, I'm able to share some of the benefits that I think my sport could help your sport. And it always just excites me to see when people max out and see what they're capable of and the moment that their face shows that they're even amazed with themselves, you know? Yeah, yeah, dude, like, when I pulled that, I was like, whoa, like, I did that? No way. Were I, you I, thinking anything? Were you thinking like, I don't care, I'm gonna fucking die today? Pretty much, yeah. I was like, dude, I am gonna make sure I lift this fucking weight, like, what can I say that? Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna yeah, lift yeah. this shit yeah. right up, I, was like, I don't care what it takes. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm that so proud cool. of you. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm, I'm excited to see uh, what you incorporate into your training. Yeah, yeah. And of course, you could always DM me or whatever and ask yeah. me whatever. And uh, I'll introduce you to my other, uh, Phil DeRue, someone I really look up into uh, in the strength and conditioning for combat sports area. And he could probably give you a ton of pointers. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, I think definitely now, like you shared some insight on like the, the weight training and how that can benefit boxing. That'd be cool. Where can we find you? On Instagram, GC Boxing. GC Boxing, that's it. And what about your address? Uh, your I'm, home address? I'm from Calgary, Alberta, in Canada. So if you're watching from Calgary, come but what say street, what's up. What street and what number? What uh, floor to? <laughs> <it? laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm like, okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> cool. See you guys next time. Man, 
I'm gullible, so like, <laughs> I would just keep going. He's like, two, three, four, seven, five. Yeah, I'm really, yo, yeah. guys, come find my address. <laughs> I'm there. Cool, see you guys next time.